Okay, perfect. All right, so we are excited to begin our uh, Goucher College info session. Um, with us, we're very excited to have Tiffany Charles uh, from admissions and then from um, the director of Hillel, we have Rabbi Josh Snyder and then an amazing student, Joan Firestein, uh, all joining us to share about Goucher College. So we are gonna get started with Tiffany first. So I will go ahead and kick it off to you to share a little bit about Goucher. So it, the floor is yours. Thank you, Diana. Uh, welcome, welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. As Diana mentioned, my name is Tiffany Charles, and I'm one of the missions counselors in the undergraduate admissions office. And I've been here for about two years, but although it does seem like it's been a lot longer for uh, really great reasons, but I'm just going to give you a short overview of who we are as a community. And um, I'll get started. So welcome again. Um, for those of you who are not too sure of who we are as an institution, I always describe Goucher College as a small private liberal arts institution, specifically located in Baltimore, Maryland, more specifically Towson. And we lean into the themes of innovation, sustainability, social justice, as well as global education. And all of those themes are evident in the curriculum that we build up for students, as well as the student life. But the first thing that I always like to talk about is location. Um, so just to kind of give you an idea of geographics, we are about three and a half hours away from New York City or a few hours away from Philadelphia. We're an hour via train from the DC, but although our address is Baltimore, Maryland, you might've heard me mention earlier that we're specifically located in the town of Towson. So I always say to students, when you're trying to figure out what type of college environment do you envision yourself in? The advantage of Goucher is that you're kind of exposed to three different types of environments. Um, we're 20 to 25 minutes from the city. We are in the surrounding area of the town of Towson, which you know is a suburban area. There's a little bit of hustle and bustle, but of course not the same as the city. And then if you've never been to our campus before, it's kind of considered rural. Um, at least that's how I describe it. There's a lot of greenery, there's trees. We have 287 acres of land, which is a lot of land. Um, actually, as an incoming student, you can have a car on campus if you chose to. Um, that's about $75 for the year to park, but you can also easily walk it as well. Um, and so most people, when they come on campus for the first time, they don't expect it to be as large as it is. Um, so that's another contrast that you have the city, the suburban, and then you have the rural town as well, as far as our campus. But now I'll move on and talk a little bit about just the facts. So we are a residential liberal arts institution. Um, we have decided to become a residential school because we wanna make sure that students not only make the connections inside the classroom, but they also make it outside the classroom. And it seems to really be working for us. Um, but as far as the liberal arts, we look at that definition as far as, we wanna make sure that our students are well-versed. They are versatile and they develop many transferable skills. Even if you think you know exactly what you wanna study, or perhaps maybe you have no idea what you wanna study. Um, and we will hone in specifically in the areas of the humanities, the social sciences, natural sciences, visual performing arts, and interdisciplinary areas as well. Um, as far as our undergraduate students, the stats have uh, fluctuated just a little bit. We have a little over 1,100 undergrad students with actually about 900 graduate students. So we're considered a small school. But again, the advantage of that is a tight-knit community, given uh, that we're residential, that makes it even tighter. And not only are students able to connect more with each other, but staff and faculty as well. Um, you're not gonna know every single student on campus, but you will be quite familiar. I remember one of the first times I came on campus when I was doing my interview, students were waving at me because as soon as you step on the campus, they wanna make sure that you feel welcomed. Um, the average class size that you'll see is about 15 to 20 students. So no, you're not gonna quite see a lecture hall of 200 students where you're not exactly sure if your professor knows your name. They will know you. They will get to know your learning style. Um, if you wanna inquire about academic assistance, hands-on experience, internship, et cetera, it's much easier to do so. And you have that individualized experience for yourself. Um, and this is just stats about our last year's income class, which keep in mind the uh, diversity of our class changes every single year. Uh, we have a huge LGBTQIA plus population. Um, about 45% of our students, I think, actually come from mid-state, which 55% of our, our students come from either out of state or internationally. We have about 25% of our students identify as part of the Jewish population. 38% uh, of our students identify as a student uh, of color. 28% of our students are student athletes and 28% of our students are first generation. So the first person in their family to go to college. And one of the things that I always like to highlight as well that 
something that you'll see in our campus is students are always willing to get to know students that are different from themselves. Um, the world obviously is comprised of different backgrounds, cultures, walks of life, and that's something that you'll generally see reflected on the campus, uh, very much so. And we also have an office of the Center of Race, Equity, and Identity that helps students to celebrate different identities and learn more about that as well, whether they're involved with a social opportunity or support services through that office as well. And so now I'll move on to academics. As I mentioned, we're a liberal arts institution. Um, so we have all of our students participate as a spin on our general education requirements called the Goucher Commons Curriculum. But I will say though, although all of our students participate as part of this, Goucher is flexible. We understand that college is an exploratory time. And you know, again, what I mentioned earlier is that sometimes you think you know what you wanna study and sometimes you're not sure what you wanna study. Um, I would consider ourselves a un undecided friendly institution. What that means is you have about, about a year and a half um, into your second semester of sophomore year to decide what major you want to pursue. And the advice I always give to students is pay attention to your classes, not that you wouldn't, but what do you find yourself wanting to learn more about? Um, talk to current students because perhaps they came in Goucher not knowing what they wanted to study or get involved because sometimes the more you get involved, it helps you choose what career that you want to go into. But then on the flip side, we also have something called an individualized interdisciplinary major or IIM. And that's for students where, let's say if you have three to four different interests, but you don't know how to put it together, you would think about your vision, write up a proposal. And if you have a few different advisors that see the envision that you're trying to put together, you're now able to create a major from scratch. So I say all that to say that there's flexibility there and don't be afraid to ask questions. But I will specifically now talk about the Goucher Commons curriculum that all of our students participate as part of. So one of the first things um, an incoming student would participate as part of is a first year seminar. So it's not necessarily related to your major, but it's more so kind of getting you used to a discussion-based classroom, getting you to articulate your opinion on the concept or hearing what your classmates' perspectives is on the concept that's being talked about. Um, and there's about 25 different classes that you can choose from, ranging from the Latinx in the US to the history of puppetry. Um, so a lot of our student ambassadors that I particularly talk to, they always talk about that that's their first exposure into a passion that they didn't even know that they had. Um, you'll also take complex problem exploration courses, uh, CPE, which we use a lot of acronyms at Goucher. Um, and that specifically will hone on or focus on real world perspectives um, and trying to look at something from a different angle. So you would be required to take about two classes that's not related to your major. So again, you're learning something else. And then we also have three areas of proficiency, one being writing. No matter what career field that you go into, you wanna have writing in your back pocket. And even if you're not a strong writer now, there are support services in place to help you achieve that skill. Um, foreign language and culture is also a requirement where you would choose from French, Spanish, or Arabic studies. And an incoming student would take a language placement exam to determine how many classes that you would take or the level of classes that you would take. Um, and then data analytics. Data analytics has been something that we've seen has become increasingly popular in the career field. Um, so we wanna make sure that you're not surprised and you know how to utilize the skill. So again, another area where you're taking about two classes related to that major so that you develop that skill set. And then we also have institutional commitments. Our race parent perspective is one of them where I always say to family, sometimes when a student comes to college, it's the first time that you've left the community that you're used to, the first time you've left the state. And college sometimes is that opportunity where you're learning those different perspectives. So that commitment kind of taps into what's going on in the outside world, or what are other ways of living, and how do I kind of understand my identity and biases, et cetera. Um, and that's a four-year sequence where you do take particular classes to fulfill that. And same thing with environmental sustainability. We offer either classes within that or a social experience. We are a green school, so we're always trying to think of different ways for students to become environmentally conscious. So that's just the really short rundown as far as what you would experience as far as the Goucher Commons curriculum. And so now I'm just gonna show you some visuals just so that you get an idea of the classrooms. So this is a lab uh, with, whether you're in a lab or not, we always try to make sure that students are allowed to have different hands-on experiences. This is uh, one of our art studio classes where we do have a full art building for various different art forms if you're interested in that. This is also an outdoor classroom where if you like the nature, 
not all classrooms take place within four walls. So you do have that opportunity depending on the professor that you're taking the class with. And so this is just highlighting our majors where we do have 25 plus. Uh, we've really been keeping our eyes and ears open to what our students are actually interested in, what they find that you know, they're drawn to and they wanna learn more about. Um, all, their, all of them are interdisciplinary in nature where you might see the title of the major and think that you're gonna learn one thing, but again, going back to the interdisciplinary approach, you're always gonna learn something else as well. Um, our most popular majors tend to be psychology, communication and media studies, biological sciences, business management. But I will say that you can't really go wrong with any of the majors because our professors are generally interested in, uh, you know, they're happy to teach what they're uh, administering to the students. Um, and if you're interested in double majoring, more than likely we will say yes. It does depend on the pairing, but we do see quite a, a lot of our Goucher students come up with a lot of uh, combinations. So again, don't be afraid to ask to see what you can pair together. And these are just our minors, which if you want, if you had an interest in something else and want to take a few classes, it's not required, but that's also something that you can add to the major as well. And so one of the biggest things that actually sets us apart as a liberal arts institution is that we require every single student to study abroad before they graduate. So yes, if you're a student athlete, if you're a double major, or even if you're very involved outside the classroom, we have issued that as a requirement, not to just put something on the checklist, but we wanna make sure that you are able to acquire that global perspective. As you can imagine, our seniors tend to say that this is their, when they study abroad, that's their best experience because it was unparalleled and they were able to acquire, um, immerse themselves in a new culture. So typically students will go by their junior year, taking those first two years to get acclimated to Goucher, and you can uh, participate in an intensive course abroad where that is a three week experience in the winter or the summer, or a more immersive opportunity where that's a full semester abroad. So yes, that's about three to four months where you would be somewhere else in the world. Um, and typically we have about 40, 60 programs for students to choose from where they, a lot of them do take place in Europe, but we are trying to expand in the areas of South America and Africa for students to choose from. As well as given that the pandemic hit us as well, we recognize that we had to shift and uh, create other opportunities for students to study abroad while not physically going abroad. So going forward, we will try to um, include other ways such as a seminar class or maybe a local internship that focuses on a global perspective. And so I'm just gonna show you a few more visuals just to kind of give you an idea of what you can expect and what hopefully you would be able to experience on your study abroad trip. And so as far as our student-centered resources, um, Goucher is always willing to help um, its students. You do not have to go it alone. We generally wanna make sure that you don't thrive only in the classroom, but you also thrive as a person. And although this slide specifically highlights the different academic resources that we have on campus, there are many other resources too that you can get connected with to make sure that you are successful. So things such as the Writing Center is extremely helpful, the Quantitative Reasoning Center helps you with math and science skills, or even the Academic Center of Excellence that helps you with uh, tutoring strategies, stress reduction strategies, and time management because yes, as a college student, you're still trying to figure out how to balance. So students typically find these resources extremely helpful in their academic career with us. And so as far as our community, as I mentioned, we are residential. I'll specifically focus on our first year village, which is the newest residential area on the campus, and that's for incoming students. Uh, we have strategically built that village to make sure that students are interacting with each other and making long lasting friendships. Uh, you will see a lot of cool things such as a bonfire pit, beach volleyball, hammocks when it's nice out, um, a, a demonstration kitchen if you want to be more interactive with cooking, or even a game room in an area for you to watch movies. Um, and residence assistants are really good too about programming efforts so that you meet your neighbors on the floor or in the building. Um, so definitely the way that we structured it, it brings our students out and about as far as connecting. And our dining center is actually centralized to the campus as well as the food is really good. Um, you may not believe my opinion, of course, we would hope that you would decide that on your own and enjoy the food, but it's really, really good. Um, you will see there's a student market where you can grab and go, but the main attraction is the buffet options where there's about nine of them, where you can see kosher food to sandwiches, to stir fry grill, 
it's an ever-changing bowl station. And not only is American food reflected in the cuisine, but also other cultural cuisines as well. It's definitely something to look forward to. Um, and we also have over 60 clubs and organizations. Um, Goucher, there's always something going on, and particularly a lot of community events that connects the students, faculty, and staff together. Um, but as far as our clubs, you will see things such as multicultural organizations to club and intramural sports to special interest clubs. But if there is not something that piques your interest at that time, that's okay. You can always create your own club. Um, and that is by you know getting three other students as well as an advisor, and now you have your own interest on the club. Um, and our student engagement team is really good about letting students know what happens on campus and saying, hey, if you have no plans this evening or this weekend, these are the many things that's going on, whether it's a performance, a guest speaker is invited, or again, another community event. And so these are just more visuals, just to kind of give you an idea. This is the first year village that I had mentioned earlier. This is the dining center that again, centralized the campus. So whenever you're hungry, much easier to get to. And this is get into Goucher, which is a spring event that our students usually look forward to as far as building a sense of community. And as far as sports, if you're interested in, we have 20 division three sports. Um, just to be transparent, that doesn't include football, wrestling, baseball, or softball, but you typically will see the, um, the college sports that you'll see at another college campus will be here reflected um, at Goucher. And we play within the landmark conference. And as I mentioned, we do have a nationally ranked equestrian team. So if you like horses at all, we have over 20 of them, as well as uh, physical riding stables on campus. And if you're interested in riding them at all, there um, are riding lessons administered for a small fee. But hopefully everything that I described so far up into the academic experience to the student life experience, you understand that we have tried to create a very intentional experience for our students. 96% of them within a year of graduation are either, they either uh, further their education by maybe going to their dream grad school, or they're able to find a job of employment that is related to their major. So we're definitely very happy to hear that. And these are just grad schools, just to show you an example of different schools that students have attended after, as well as different job opportunities, whether it was an internship that maybe they continued um, after they graduated with us, or just a great opportunity that they found based on the experience they had with us. And so just to give you the next steps, which we do not expect you to remember any of this, this is also online, but keep in mind, uh, we are on the Common App, uh, where you can send in other materials such as your high school transcripts. We usually look for an unweighted 3.2 GPA, not look for, but that's usually the average. Uh, we are test optional where we have not adopted that because of the pandemic. We understand that testing doesn't always tell the full story. So if you wanted to send that, you certainly can, but if not, it's not a trick question. Uh, we'll also look at your personal essay where we generally wanna to get to know who you are that's not reflected on the transcripts, as well as two letters of recommendation from a college advisor, as well as a teacher. And my personal advice is ask someone who knows you. So again, we're able to see the full picture and you can have someone positively advocate on your behalf. And it is free of charge. So there is no application fee that you need to worry about. And these are just deadlines to be mindful of. We are rolling admissions. Um, but we do have a few deadlines in mind, such as early action, not to be confused with early decision, just an application deadline to get it in early, as well as regular decision, if you want to take a little more time, is January 15th, give you plenty of time to receive an admissions decision and decide if you want to deposit with us, which is May 1st. As far as merit scholarships, every single student is automatically considered, so there is nothing for you to worry about but to simply send in your transcript, which you would anyways, in addition to your application. And once we make that admission decision, we would decide what you would be qualified for. They are renewable and they are awarded up to eight semesters. And just remember, merit scholarship is money that you do not have to pay back. But as far as financial aid, 97% of our students receive institutional aid. We're a private institution, so that sticker price, it might look high, but more often times than not, a student is not paying that because we understand that affordability is a huge thing. Um, so we work hand in hand with students as far as merit scholarships, financial aid, which we always encourage for you to fill out the FAFSA as soon as you can, as well as we encourage you to look into outside scholarships, which brings that price tag down. 
So I will leave you this with this as far as my portion of the session that we're extremely Goucher proud. We've received a lot of accolades such as being one of the 40 colleges that changed lives, being voted the most innovative um, liberal arts colleges, et cetera. But honestly, the most important ranking that we can receive is in hopes that you have a positive experience with us. So that is just a general overview of who we are as a Goucher community. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Tiffany. No uh, that was so much fantastic information. Um, uh, I just wanted to say again, if, if there are any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, if there's any specifically for Tiffany, or we will hear more about Jewish life at Goucher also, and then we can just have a full Q&A at the end if uh, there are any outstanding questions. Um, Okay, so I will move us right along then. Um, I'm going to go ahead and introduce both uh, Rabbi Josh Snyder, the director of Gautra Hillel, and a current student, junior uh, Joan Firestein. Um, and I'm going to hand it off to you guys to go ahead and share a little bit about Goucher from a uh, Jewish student perspective. All right, go ahead, Joan. You start us off while I'm pulling up our deck of information. All right, so I'll do a little bit about myself really quickly. Um, I'm Joan, um, I'm a junior, so class of 2023. Um, I'm a history major and a creative writing minor. Um, and I'm also part um, for extracurricular stuff. I'm part of Goucher Hillel. Um, this past year, I was um, uh, one half of the Shabbat co-chairs which was super fun. I had an amazing co-chair um, of just planning out um, some Shabbat, Shabbat events um, and services, which I'll get into a little bit more um, later in the slide. But um, yeah, Jewish life at Gotcha. Ooh. Yeah, so I'll read the first stat, um, kind of what Tiffany said earlier. Um, so uh, Jewish students, uh, make up approximately 25% of our undergraduate population, or about 300 students, uh, which makes Goucher one of the top 10 liberal arts colleges in the country by percentage of Jewish students, which makes sense. Also, Towson, I'm a uh, Baltimore person, Towson is super close to Pikesville, um, which is about, I guess, I believe 15 minutes away, um, which is a super uh, Jewish populated uh, town in Maryland. Yeah, so we, but we are Jewish population on campus comes from all over the country and the world. Uh, we have a lot of students from New York, Philadelphia, DC metro areas, Chicago, Boston, LA, Seattle, San Francisco, Texas towns, places in the Midwest. I think we've got a pretty diverse Jewish population of folks that come looking for the liberal arts, Jewish, liberal arts college experience and that find that Jewish population is an important thing. So I'm Rabbi Josh, I've been Goucher for 13 years now. Um, and um, it's an awesome place, as, as Tiffany shared, as Joan said, it's really a community. It's a small, it's a small college. It feels like a community and a place where you really feel like you have so many opportunities to be involved in so many different things. Um, at least half of the students that are Jewish on campus, we estimate participate in one, well, not estimate, we actually have the stats, participate in one Hillel event each year. And over the course of four years, close to 80% of them participate in some Hillel, in Hillel activities. We have kosher food on campus at the, the Nosh Station, uh, student-driven welcoming community that's led by amazing dynamic student leaders like Joan and support from and connections with the Baltimore Jewish community in Pikesville and elsewhere. Um, Goucher really has become a destination school for Jewish life. So in terms of our Hillel staff, we've got myself and Beth Vanderstoop, who is our um, global Jewish life and engagement coordinator. Beth focuses on Israel and uh, global Jewish communities as we have a focus on Goucher at like getting to know other places in the world, that's also a part of our Hillel in terms of understanding what's Jewish life like in other places in the world and making those connections and building that knowledge for us. We also have a part-time rabbinic intern who works with us and teaches classes and does interfaith kind of work as well. Joan is one of the, the duo that's created weekly Shabbat services, which we have dinners, you know, and we're hoping to come back in the fall and do more dinners on campus, Shabbat dinners every week. Um, and uh, services have been online that we've been doing while we've been in remote learning. Um, we've got holiday programming. We've got a new holiday programming chair who's going to focus on doing things for Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and all of those things. By the way, professors on campus are very understanding. If you do need to take off for those holidays and getting excused absences, we've got some policies that really help uh, support our students in that. There are so many different ways to do Jewish culture. Social events like ice skating, 
Jewish Learning Fellowship, it's that kind of thing that pays students to do uh, an opportunity to learn more Jewishly on a weekly basis. Trips that we've done, like an interfaith trip to the National Holocaust Memorial Museum and African American History and Culture Museum a couple of years ago with Jewish students and students of color, um, communities overlapping, I think, on campus as well, um, and really understanding more about the background uh, historically that really helped our students connect with one another. Impactful speakers that we've had that connect to multiple identities like Michael Twitty and Abby Stein in the past couple of years and, and others that we've had this year. And weekly opportunities to explore Israeli culture and Jewish global culture. And our Hillel is really a part of a campus culture of building understanding across differences Tiffany talked about. Our students come to Goucher to be in this small pond, meet people who are different than them, explore their different identities, look at look at uh, their academic issues through multiple lenses as, as with our center pair exploration courses. And that really is part of building a campus culture of inclusivity and understanding across difference, uh, including race, sexuality, ability, and gender, along with faith, along with religion as key components of how we identify. And those have been pretty important parts of how we've really done the work within our Jewish community and building an inclusive Jewish community on campus as well. Yeah, so there are many different ways to get involved um, with Kajar Halal. So we have whoop, we have Halal um, Council and Committees. So um, I am part of a Halal Council. As I said, I last year, I'll go by this past year, I was a Shabbat uh, co-chair along with my friend. Um, and a couple of committees we have is a Shabbat committee, um, which we are always looking for members. Um, to help uh, plan services um, and events such as uh, Havdalah Hangouts, um, as well as we have um, event uh, programming, cha programming chair um, and then programming committee, which um, helps with other programs that aren't um, entirely Shabbat, um, but they're still Jewish related. And like Rabbi Josh said, we're having um, a new um, a holiday uh, chair that will help focus more so on holiday programming, like specifically, so we can have more of that. Um, we have engagement and communication internships. It's just an internship to try and engage um, students on campus um, to come and join whether events or Halal itself. Um, however, um, Jewish Learning and Israel Learning Fellowships. I did JLF, uh, that's Jewish Learning Fellowship, um, the entire semester. There are different types of fellowships. Um, they're like a semester long, different um, um, themes and topics. Um, they're super fun. Like Rabbi Josh said, you do get paid, but you do learn, you do get a, a really nice sense of community. And even though the past two that I were on were online, um, it was still very nice to be able to talk um, with uh, fellow students and like have different ideas and not be afraid to argue, but also be able to listen and see where other people are coming from. Um, we have Discord, social media, and podcasts. Um, to my friends, uh, this past year, we, they did uh, Spinniverse with Rabbi Josh, and I know Josh also has another podcast too. Um, and yeah, we have a Discord, which is super awesome. I can also put the link um, in the chat here um, on our Zoom Live um, if people want that. Um, it's just a way to make friends with the community. Um, and then, yeah, connection to other Halals in Baltimore Jewish community. Um, we've had events where we've collaborated with other universities, um, such as Towson, um, I believe also Johns Hopkins. Um, we had one, um, Alana Arian came uh, for a Havdalah hangout, a uh, special Shabbat. Um, and so that was a joint um, celebration as well as um, this past year because of COVID, um, we would alternate when we would have services. So one day, uh, Goucher, we would host our own services, but afterwards, um, next week, we would send out links for um, services around the area, um, which was really nice for people to get away to explore other synagogues, which is really fun. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll add too, you know, as we're coming back onto campus in the fall, we're excited to be re, uh, 
be be back in our lounge. We have a, a nice size Hilla lounge that can easily suit, you know, fit about 40 students for a Shabbat dinner or event. We've got a lovely patio outside to do outdoor programming, which I know we're going to do a lot of this year. And uh, and you know, really we're we're right in the middle of campus in the dorm um complex but kind of across from the first year village which uh, you saw the picture of that in tiffany's first shot and i think people have really taken their hillel experience and make the most of it leadership opportunities through hillel have led people to leadership opportunities in life one of the shots i saw in what tiffany was sharing was billy weiss who was a hillel student leader who went on birthright with us many years ago um who then became who's a photographer and became a photographer chief photographer for the boston red sox uh, the U.S. Open, a number of other events. So I think the opportunities that people often get to explore leadership, to create community through Hillel, it's often part of their Goucher, part and parcel of their Goucher experience that helps build their leadership, gives them networks and connections to be able to help beyond college as well. So I know we've got some folks, we've got Jen with us. Jen, if you have any questions, want to know anything from us, we are happy to let you know. Um, what I'll also say, Jen, if, and anybody who watches this, you know, not live, if you want to share, you know, your name, address, and email with us and contact information, um, we are happy to send you a free Goucher Hillel t-shirt. Joan is wearing one right now. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, get a little bit of swag. That way we get to know you, you get to know us. Who doesn't love free swag? <laughs> awesome. Um, yes, Jen, any questions? You are our, our sole survivor right now. <laughs> um, independent college counselor in the Bay Area. Awesome. Well, welcome. We are happy to send you a t-shirt, Jen. Just let us know. <laughs> and we have had students from the Bay Area, like, um, definitely a number of students from the Bay Area, a member who've been involved in Hillel from, from San Fran, Oakland, Berkeley, the whole, uh, around the whole region. Awesome. Awesome. Well, great. Please let them know they can get in contact with any of us. We'd love to be able to share anything with them. Thank you. Awesome. Um, cool. Well, is there any final things that you all want to share? Um, particularly, Joan, is there anything else that you would like to share about your kind of student experience? That is just I'm, like the, the thing you have to know or the thing you wish you would have known in selecting your what school you wanted to go to or or in coming to Goucher? Oh, I'm not sure. I feel like though I want to like kind of confirm with what like Josh and Tiffany have said. So I, for me personally, whenever I like um, when when I was looking at colleges and everyone's like, you have like all oh, like your infographics and like the people are talking and you're really sitting there like, okay, but is it really like that? But I, I what a thing that like really stood out to me, uh, Tiffany mentioned about like professors like wanting to help you. I, that is so like so true. Um, I can't obviously speak for every single professor in like every department, but at least for me um, in the history department and the creative writing department, um, my professors and advisors are super helpful. Um, they do want you to learn. Um, all professors have office hours, so you can always go and ask questions. They, they want to talk um, and they, they want to be able to help you in any possible way they can. Um, which is so nice. Um, and they're they're always up also to to like challenge. You can totally challenge. Not all professors, but at least for me in the history department, they they want you to be able to have a dialogue. They want you to be able to have a conversation, and they're here to listen and they help you um, in any way. Um, as far as like things on campus, um, if, if we do end up having it for Helena, I recommend joining a first year fest if we do it, Chaz, if we're doing it, because that's what I did um, my first year. Um, one of the pictures in uh, the Halal slide, I saw me in it, so some of my friends in it, um, was genuinely such a good experience. Um, you got to move in early, which was super awesome, and just meet a whole bunch of first years that are super anxious, super nervous, just like you. Um, and you see like um, the people that are part of a uh, Halal leadership, like helping 
And even if like during that event, you never really got super close, it was so nice for me to walk around campus and have some of the people from leadership like waving to me. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I don't feel like alone, even if I don't really know them, it's still like a friendly face. Um, um, I think that's it. A uh, library is great. I work at the library. I sit at the desk. It's great. I recommend using study spaces are also definitely um, recommend and utilize the woods. The Goucher woods are beautiful. You're in Towson, so it is a city. It's very loud, very busy next to a highway, but you go into the woods and you feel so totally disconnected. And it is, it's a good time. It's nice to just be able to sit and relax and get into nature. Now there's cicadas, but <laughs> when we're back, there won't be. Um, yeah, I think that's all I can think of. I think, yeah, it's, it's, it's a fun time. It's really nice. Everyone is great and it's, it's fun. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. That was all really great. It's, it's all about hearing what it's really like from the student perspective. Um, fantastic. So, um, if great, awesome, love the exchange of information happening in the chat. Wonderful. Um, cool. So unless there are any other questions, Jen, feel free to write anything in the chat. Um, I just want to really thank, um, Rabbi Josh, Tiffany, and Joan, all three of you for being here with us for running this really fantastic info session on Goucher College. I hope many people find this and get to kind of learn just how wonderful of a, of a school Goucher is. And, and this will be up for lots of people to see. So thank you. Um, the virtual college road trip still has the second half of June. So we will be having more uh, visits and hopefully people can check them out. We're also having a lot of really awesome workshops. Um, where uh, we're, we're doing just workshops on lots of different um, topics surrounding college prep. Um, so yeah, I look forward to people finding those. Um, and thank you guys all for, for being here and joining us. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Um, feel free to put my email in there, hillel at goucher.edu if you wanna reach me with any information or want a t-shirt. Awesome. <sighs> Thanks, everyone. Have a great night. Thanks so much. I love nice. this program. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Jen. Yeah, please, uh, please share it. Every uh, road trip visit that we're doing, and this is is all, all schools all over the country. They're all being uploaded onto that YouTube channel that I put in the chat. So um, please okay. share with with this. Great. Our local rabbi sent this to everyone, and all my parent friends and community friends texted me and said, oh my gosh, this is such a cool, I mean, it's, there's yes. so much appeal to it. So you'll see me on others, but it's, it's okay. really good. good for you. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that. Glad you found us. Yeah. Thanks so much, everyone. All right. Yeah. Have a great night. Have a good night. Night.